following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, this is Christmas week. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to everyone. Uh, we will be open all week with the exception of, I think, Friday, where it's going to be a, a, a very short session. And all week long, it will most probably be a very, very light session. We did have triple wishing, witching hour. It was actually quadruple witching hour on Friday. With not much, uh, not much things happening, so we'll we'll keep an eye on that. As we always do, we like to start the day looking at across the pond at the German DAX, and as you can see, this has been in a pretty tight trading range here for the last three or four days, much much like we've been here uh, in the United States. As I said many times last week, the most amazing thing to me is the fact that we have so many 1.618 expansions in all of these markets. I'm not going to. Uh, go over those today because you get you get a little bored here, and uh, that will be uh, not a good thing. So, I just want to you know re just keep in mind that we have a 1.618 expansions on the Nasdaq, the S and P, the Dow, the IWM, and uh, also the uh, transportation index. But I think that the real surprise coming could be in the Treasury bond market because everybody is lopsided that way. In other words, they know rates are going to higher, higher as we all do, but we could get this monster uh, short covering rally that could be as much as, you know, 10 handles in the bonds. And that would still be extremely bearish because remember, we came from 177 down to 147. We dropped 30 handles. So 11 handles back is just nothing more than a 38% retracement. So I think that's something that uh, we should keep in mind uh, as we as we look at some of these things uh, as we're going here. As a matter of fact, let's just take a quick look here at the notes and bonds. And then we'll move on to the markets that I think are making some pretty interesting patterns, uh, particularly the gold market. Uh, and some of the others. But if you'll look here at this, is the uh, Treasury notes uh, over the past uh, month. As you can see, you know, starting in December, uh, we had a little bit of a rally in December. The first seven days, we rallied up to a 50% retracement of the previous high. Then we came down and made this huge ABCD pattern. But if you'll notice what's happened to the Treasury bonds, which is the blue line here, that's overlaid over the Treasury notes. Now, notes are, are 20 years or less and bonds are 20 years or more. Usually it's the 30-year bond that is the most, uh, the most powerful. If you'll notice that we did make a slightly lower low by just two or three pips uh, from the low we made last year uh, in the bond. So this is a very, very interesting. And as we mentioned before, this is telling us that short rates are going up much faster uh, than long rates. And I believe that's because the market is trying to play catch up because no one really knows what's going to happen with this quantitative easing thing because, you know, that's the main thing to, uh, you know, keep in mind. Now, if we take a look at the really long-term uh, picture in the bonds, uh, this is going back over the last five years. Uh, you'll see that we have a really nice uh, cycle pattern there. That's basically, it's a weekly chart. So you're seeing 75 weeks. Uh, that's pretty much a year and a half uh, cycle between those um, to the, those two cycles, and if you notice that we we did hit the exact 61% retracement here in the bonds uh, in that 30-year bond when we hit 147.04, and now we're trading about a point and a half higher than that, which isn't very much. But if you take a look at this, just a 38% rally back would take you up to that uh, 159 level, and that would still be extremely bearish. Uh, and, you know, this market does move uh, very, very dramatically, and it trades technically uh, quite well. If you look at this bond chart real closely, you'll notice again the importance of the 1.618 expansions that we talk about in this week's newsletter. 
because the importance of that ratio is that the ending ratio. In other words, when you look at the the, the chambered nautilus or the, the Fibonacci spiral, the end of that spiral comes in at 1.618. I've always felt that once you get beyond that 1.618, you're out into the uh, the cosmos, because that thing can go anywhere, as we know. We've seen explosive moves in some of these things where the markets just absolutely go bananas like we've seen here, you know, in the stock market. Now, we've had this tremendous move in, in some stocks, uh, particularly the uh, stocks of the banking index, which have, have been incredibly uh, bullish. They've moved uh, more than, I believe, 22 percent. The overall market's moved between 10 and 12 percent based on you know, one of the uh, indices that you're looking at with the Dow Jones, of course, being one of the stronger ones because it's influenced by these heavily priced stocks. That's one of the things that I'm going to do this morning is to go over some of these stocks in the Dow Jones and some of the other key stocks that are, you know, heavily weighted so that you can see what those patterns are. And if it lines up to what looks like could be, you know, an ending move, or where are we going to go from here? That type of uh, thing that you're looking at. So um, believe me, folks, there is birth, there's nobody out there that is bearish. I mean, there's zero. I mean, well, there's not zero, but it's about as low as it gets uh, from the uh, bearish side. So this is not that something could happen to change anything, but you want to watch it because these are just patterns, and sometimes they fail. Uh, but when they don't fail, you know, they're, they're something that you want to keep in mind. They're only numbers. Uh, I do not do anything with the fundamentals. Uh, I don't use the oscillators or uh, lagging indicators like MACDs or stochastics. <clears throat> I felt more familiar with the, the ratios and the patterns, and that gives you the entry. Because if they fail, you'll know right away. And you can stand aside and uh, see what, what happens. But I believe we're going to have a um, the uh, Duffy the uh, the chart on that 20-year bond versus the 20-year note. No, that's not inverted. Huh? It's just the fact that the uh, the bonds have uh, held up much much better than the than the notes have. If you take a look at the long-term charts on those, you'll see that that's the case. And let's just get back to that because this is I think this is a really important. I'll give you the two that I watch. Okay, here here's the bonds. Here here's the treasury note chart and you're going to see how it's uh, totally collapsed beyond the, these numbers. You'll notice the 78% retracement, it broke below that. It broke below the second 78% retracement, it broke below that. And now we're down to an area where is long-term uh, very, very important because if we look at this on a um, weekly basis going back over the last 10 years, you're going to see that what we're looking at here uh, in this Treasury note market is that we've made a 382 retracement of the low in 2007. Uh, and remember, this was uh, the low in 2007 was in March. And of course, we didn't top in the stock market until October the 7th of 2008. So these markets, you know, have a tendency to go off. But if we look at this 10-year uh, Treasury note on a weekly basis, you're going to see three major ratios. And this is a weekly chart, so I think pay, should pay pretty much attention to it. It's uh, the 127 of the low from last year. We're at the 61% retracement of the low from 2009. These are exact numbers, by the way. And we're at the 38% retracement of the low from uh, 2007. So keep that in mind. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. The holiday season is here, and TFNN Salvation Army Tire Dollar Special is back. Right now, you can get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and 10% of whatever you spend will be donated in your name to the Salvation Army. The sale only comes around once a year, so don't miss out. Tiger Dollars are a great way to add extra savings to TFNN newsletters or services, and they never expire. Get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Thursday, December 22nd, and get your 25% bonus while donating 10% of your purchase to the Salvation Army. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, I'm uh, going to finish up here on the bonds and notes. Uh, this chart that I've just put in uh, to the Tiger Den is the chart of the high grade or not high grade, excuse me, high yield bonds or junk bonds. Uh, and you'll notice the relationship between the notes uh, and the uh, treasury bonds. Folks, this is or note between notes and the, the high grade uh, yield. Uh, I keep saying high grade. I mean high yield. I should just say what they are. They're junk bonds. And basically, it's showing you that they're throwing caution to the wind there. I mean, this should be those bonds should have been going down with the rest of the bonds, but in fact that they couldn't means that people are just trying to keep the yields up, which I don't know what it means, but the chart pattern has got a divergence like we've never seen before. I, I would like to mention this. A lot of people don't realize, you know, how Mike Milken, you know, started this thing with the bonds. Uh, he was at Wharton back in 1972. He came to Drexel about two years before I did. I got there in 76. He was there in 74. And his idea was to change the the moniker of junk bonds to high yield bonds because remember we were in the mid 70s now and we were looking at inflation that was heading towards 13 percent and yields on the 30 year bond or the on the treasury on treasury bills one year treasury bills we were yielding 13 percent so small companies like companies in the uh, Russell uh, 2000 and uh, the Wilshire 500 some of these other play Wilshire 5000 they couldn't get money and so the best way to do it was to go to the bond market. And, and Milken made a case that, you know, you can use these uh, for collateral. And, of course, he did a, a tremendous uh, job of promoting high-yield bonds. Boy, oh, boy. Let's call it like it is. This junk bonds is what they are. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Oh, the, someone's asking the uh, question about the, um, the, the Milken office. Uh, Mr. G, basically, uh, it was um, – 
on the corner of uh, Wilshire and Rodeo in Beverly Hills. It's a four-story building that is still there. Mike still owns it. I, I don't know what they, I think it's into, it's got some offices and a bo boutique firm there, but the first floor were the uh, was the regular stock and commodity offices. There were 23 brokers on the first floor. Uh, floors two, three, and four uh, were all Milken's uh, offices. I think he had 200, 200 people in his, uh, in his group, but he was on the fourth floor, and the whole floor was one giant trading room, and there was an elevated desk that he sat on that he could be able to see the whole office at any one time. He could see every cubicle. They didn't have private offices up there. Even his, even his brother Lowell did not have private offices. Uh, and basically, those guys worked. Mike was in the office by 4 in the morning, and uh, I was there usually by 5.30. And so, uh, you know, he was a very hard worker. He's incredibly smart. The problem was he got a little greedy, and that's, uh, that's basically it. If he hadn't have done that, uh, you'd be talking uh, about him in the same vein, and you would be uh, Mr. Um, uh, Gates and Mr. Buffett and some of these other guys because uh, he, he is a very, very smart fellow. Uh, and so, well, you know, that's basically it. Anyway, that's the old days. If you want to read about it, there's a great book. It even shows the offices right there. It's called The Den of Thieves, and it's it's really a, the best book about it. If you read the book called The Predator's Ball, uh, that was a book that was basically orchestrated by Mike, you know, to try to, you know, downplay uh, some of the stuff that was going on. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to see. But, you know, he did go to jail for 18 months in a minimum security uh, place up in uh, Northern California. It didn't even have a lock on the door. He had a full screen TV. He had his own uh, his monitor. He had a fax machine and he didn't eat prison meals. He was uh, he was catered his meal every day. He ate one meal a day and that was catered to him. So uh, that was tough. That's what you call the country club of prisons. Anyway, well, let's move on to the next one here. Let's take a quick look here at what's happening in the um, crude oil market. Last, This is a four hour chart. Now I like four hour charts because you see you're basically looking at a daily chart that's been expanded. And as you can see here, we had that breakout above 53 on Sunday night, and we were alerting you to that because, you know, there was no confirmation between the Canadian dollar and the oil market, and that they have a correlation of better than 85%. So that sort of triggered there was a possibility here, and we backed off to a 50% retracement of the low on the 29th of November. That was also a 38% retracement of the low from November the 13th. Now, what we've done now is we've gone up and we've made a perfectly symmetrical head and shoulders pattern, as you can see here. The left shoulder and the right shoulder are equal. Uh, they're coming in exactly at the same price. The time difference between the shoulder and the head and the head and the shoulder is correct. And we've we've already come down more than a, uh, a dollar, uh, more than a dollar and a half a barrel just since last night when I when I posted this, um, you know, for the folks at uh, the 24 seven. So anyway, th this is what if we can get above 5350 now, then we've got a chance for a pretty valid breakout. And I say 5350 because that would be above the 78% retracement of the of the the head pattern in the head and shoulders pattern. But when you have head and shoulders patterns, they should be uh, very, very symmetrical. Now, I, what I wanted to do, um, no, the, Duffy, uh, um, uh, Martha Stewart went to, she didn't go to club, uh, to club fed. She went to a... Uh, uh, a minimum security place, but it was not like what Milken went to. Uh, so I, you know, I, you know, I, I'll end it at that. So I don't know much about where she went, but all I know it wasn't like where um, uh, Mike went to. Anyway, let's take a look here. At, by the by, the way, I am. I've met him a few times, uh, but I'm not. I'm certainly not a. Uh, any, I'm a I, I've met him. That's all. I mean, I'm not a friend. Friends with him. I respect what he did. I don't like how it ended, of course, but. Uh, you know, he had some great ideas. He just got a little bit greedy, and we've all done that. You know, been there, done that. That's not a big, uh, you know, you know, big thing to look at. So we'll see. There, uh, let's let's get out of this prison stuff because I don't like to talk about that stuff. Hold on just a second here, and I want to get to uh, one of the charts that I wanted to look at next after the crude oil. Uh, what I wanted to do is to go over some of these charts uh, that we're seeing here on a. Uh, 
a longer term basis. I'm going to start out here with one of the ones that the Basil Chapman always talks about because he being an old uh, codger like myself, uh, we've always had the old adage that as General Electric goes, so goes the market. Uh, this is the the chart long term daily going back over the last nine months of General Electric. And as you can see, uh, we did go up here last week and we made a 78% retracement of the previous high. Now, this is not really a good head and shoulders pattern because the even though the left shoulder and the right shoulder are equal, uh, you don't have very good time symmetry. And, and I like to see the time symmetry. Now, that's my personal opinion. Other people will say that's a good head and shoulders pattern just because the left shoulder and the right shoulder are equal. And, and that's tradable. There's no question about that. Well, one of the things that you could do during something like this is to go back and go to a four-hour chart that gives you the last uh, you know, uh, month and a half. And if you look at that, you'll be able to see that the uh, price of uh, General Electric has made a beautiful three drive to a top pattern over the past uh, three and a half weeks. And then here again, in the, if you'll notice the red square, um, it, which, which illustrates the 1.618 expansion that tells you that that's pretty much what you're looking at. So we'll take a break here, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, what I'm going to do now is to pull out some stocks uh, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and a few of the more popular stocks uh, to take a look at those just to see the patterns. I don't trade stocks very often. Boy, that's the understatement of the year. But uh, the patterns are still the same that we see in futures uh, and in Forex for sure. Uh, the first one we're going to look at here is the weakest stock in the Dow of the higher price group. Uh, higher price is anything $100 a share or more. Remember that the Dow Jones is a price-weighted index. It doesn't count on the capitalization. I believe the largest capitalized stock is still uh, ExxonMobil. Uh, probably followed by Apple would be my guess. But remember, it's a price-weighted index. And the biggest uh, price-weighted stock in the Dow, of course, is Goldman Sachs. Uh, if you'll notice here, United Technologies has just completed a 38% ADCD correction. It's been in a bear market since it hit 120-something in change. Uh, and you can see that this, this stock is under uh, a great deal of pressure. Now, if we take a look at another stock that just made a brand-new high just last week, which was uh, Boeing Airlines. You'll notice that uh, Boeing Airlines made an ABCD pattern all during 2016 where we completed a double top at 160 a share. Uh, immediately after hitting that, it, it hit it during the uh, early morning, uh, but it never closed into new high ground into a double top, which is also a little bit of a problem if you're thinking it was a valid breakout. We've come down about $6 a share, which isn't very much. But if this double top is uh, to be good, you're not going to see um, Goldman, uh, see Boeing Airlines get above the 163 level. Uh, but you'll notice in the middle between 2015 and 2016 into February, it had a perfect ABCD to the downside. So these patterns do work. They just don't work uh, all the time. But uh, they do work uh, some of the time. I had a couple of emails over the weekend about the fact that we have uh, Mercury has gone uh, retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. That actually happened on Friday, folks. And remember, that, that'll stay that way for, uh, I think it stays that way for almost uh, three weeks to a month this time because of the fact that, you know, it, it, it moves back and forth because it's moving so quickly that it, it makes a, a hard thing to look at. So uh, Mercury doesn't go back direct, I don't believe, until another three or four weeks. I'll have that answer for you uh, tomorrow. I'm not going to be here on Wednesday and Thursday. I have a couple of little cowboys coming out here to visit me, and so we're going to take the three-year-old and a five-year-old uh, around the different places that uh, we get to see. By the way, if you ever come to Tucson, there's uh, about four things you really should see. One is the Desert Museum that's got all the the uh, plants and animals that are uh, that are in our area. Uh, the other thing is the uh, Plane Museum. We have one of the greatest plane museums in the world. And then we also, but it's really difficult to get into, is Mount Hopkins where you can go up into the uh, observatory, which is just south of uh, it's just south of the city, and be able to. Old Tucson is okay, but it's nothing like these other things, Duffy. Uh, Old Tucson is where they used to do a whole bunch of movies years ago with John Wayne. They did uh, oh, just a whole bunch of them in that area. The Searcher, Kit Peak, that's the place. Uh, it's right. Kit Peak, Mount Wilson, Mount Wilson is where this. Um, uh, thing is, it's really fabulous to see that thing. And there's just nothing like it. And then we also have the Karshner Caverns, which is one of the most beautiful caves that we have. And Sabino Canyon, which is about two miles from our house. So if you ever get to Tucson, a lot of things to do in the desert. But uh, I will not be here on Wednesday and Thursday. I will be here on Friday. And I'll be here tomorrow, but uh, that's the way it works. And also, we I think we're, we're closed on Monday. Monday is going to be the uh, Christmas holiday. So we're going to have a period there where the market is going to be extremely uh, light. And that's from Christmas Eve. I mean, very few people going to the market on Christmas Eve. That That's just... Uh, that just doesn't happen very often. You have to have usually something specific. Uh, yeah, the biosphere cross that one off. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's worth the money. But if you like scientific stuff, I guess it's okay. All right, let's move on uh, to the next one we want to look at. Is uh, let's take a look at uh, Walt Disney here. We have the new. Um, uh, Star Wars out, and it's going gangbusters, I guess. Again, I wanted to, to point this out because of the fact that 
If we look at Disney here, you'll notice that uh, we have a big uh, 1.618 level there. Uh, we double topped over the last two weeks at this level of 106. We're trading at uh, uh, 104, uh, 90, 105 level right now. So that's going to be an interesting one uh, to watch to see if this double top holds. But this uh, evidently the uh, show for Disney was very, very well received and everything was, uh, you know, pretty much copacetic. Now, I did get a really nice chart from our good hands, good friend, Stan Harley, who is, uh, you know, one of the best cycle guys that we have using uh, traditional cycles. It has uh, nothing to do with the astrology part, uh, he, uh, but uh, this is basically what he's looking at are these trading days, and you'll be able to see uh, the main thing that we have going on here with the uh, trading day cycles. TD means trading days. So you'll notice that he's looking for a, uh, a trading day cycle ending here in about uh, 10 days, right near the end of the year. Uh, so that'll be another one to keep a look at. But you'll notice that these have been pretty good. And uh, you want to keep an eye on it because uh, they're not perfect. But when you add them to the ratios and stuff, that's what you're looking at. Folks, there should be a great deal of support. Uh, in the S&P at 2,200. I know that's 58 handles from where it is right now, but uh, it has to hold that. That would be equivalent to what's happened in the crude oil chart. If you remember the breakout that we had in crude oil, how it lasted for, you know, just about uh, seven or eight hours, and then the market went back below again, we're going to be seeing that same type of possible uh, support coming in uh, around that 2,200 level which will be uh, very, very uh, interesting if we ever get there. You know, there might, there might only be one down day for the whole year of 2017. We don't know, but we'll have to, to wait and see how that is going on. Okay, the next one that we want to look at is the chart from our good friend um, Kevin uh, Murphy, who is one of the disciples of uh, Mr. Uh, Ehrman. And I wanted to put this chart to show you that he's looking – for a uh, low to come in also right around uh, the same time that we're looking at it with Stan Harley. So we'll watch this uh, very closely uh, with that one too. So we'll keep that in mind. Okay, moving on uh, to one of the next stocks that we want to look at, which is Facebook. Uh, this is a very interesting stock because it's had a pretty nice run to the upside, been under pressure uh, Recently, probably, uh, you, know, you can see that it bottomed right around election time like everything else, but it has not had the, the explosive rally to the upside. We're basically completing a Gartley here up at the 123 and change level, but it did have a beautiful three drive to a top pattern uh, up at that 133 level. It had a perfect symmetry. In other words, from drive one to drive two to drive three uh, were all very equal in time. The first one was 1.618. The second one was 1.27. All of those are the things you like to see when you're watching you know, some of these uh, markets that are uh, very, very symmetrical. And you'll, you'll see this symmetry in just about everything. Oh, one thing I need to, to, to bring to your attention is right here, folks. Hold on, because I think this is relatively important. It's about Treasury bonds and open interest. I'll cover that in just a minute. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. 
Starting January 4th, swim lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the open interest situation that we're seeing here in the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds. For the past week or so, the, the open interest has been uh, decelerating or actually decreasing in notes and bonds. And if you'll notice, the bottom part of this is that when you see decreasing open interest with decreasing prices, that's a sign that uh, shorts are uh, leaving the market, taking profits. That sets up a situation for a very sharp rally. Usually, it doesn't always happen that way, but uh, sort of keep in mind uh, that because we've seen this happen in gold and silver, both at tops and bottoms, and we're starting to see signs in the two of the largest, they are the largest commodities that we trade, which are the Treasury notes first and, of course, Treasury bonds second. The S&Ps, you know, are behind those, of course. Okay, I wanted to talk a few, a little bit about some of these other stocks that we're looking at here uh, in the uh, Dow Jones and some of the other things that we're looking at here to get you an idea of these completed patterns that we're seeing. If you'll notice here, this is uh, Home Depot. Uh, we're also completing a, a, a multiple ABCD patterns up here at the 137 level. It's also a 1.618 expansion of the high from October through November of this year. So uh, you'll want to be able to uh, keep in mind that you'll see some of these are very, very interesting as you go through. Uh, we'll take a next look as we're going to look at United Healthcare, which is one that has been, you know, going absolutely crazy to the upside. And here's one where you're starting to see uh, United Healthcare is making that 1.27 expansion up here in the 165 level. Now that's just that's been the strongest uh, of the uh, well, no, Goldman Sachs has by far been the strongest, but the other ones have uh, been you know right behind it. Goldman Sachs to sell, sells for around 240. Uh, I believe that's uh, roughly the price. And if we take a look here at Goldman Sachs here on the uh, longer term chart, going back a year and a half. You'll notice that it's made a perfect 1.27 up there at 245. That was off the high in June of last year. And it's made a 1.618 expansion from the high in November of last year. Now, is this a major high? I don't know. But all I can tell you is since November, this thing has been like a proverbial rocket shift. And maybe it'll just back off a few days and continue higher. That's, uh, you know, be able to see what's going on. Okay. Um, the uh, main thing that uh, that someone's asked from Massachusetts is about Stan Harley's uh, 
uh, low that he's looking at here in the uh, stock indices. It comes in at the last day of the year. And if you remember, Stan, when we had him on the air here, he was strongly uh, positive about the fact that we have that January effect where the small caps have a tendency to gain on the long, on the long caps. It gives a, a positive bias to the market in the first part of last year. If you remember last year, in January, on the January 4th, we had a big break in the market. It broke all the way down into February. The market did exactly the opposite and made the low in February and then had to rally up. So uh, that's a very important fact to realize that when these patterns you know, don't uh, work like they're supposed to be, that means they're probably going to do the exact opposite. I have a, a hard time with seasonals. Uh, because unless they line up perfectly with these patterns and ratios that I see, I don't have the confidence that I have in other things else. And believe me, folks, all of this is related to, uh, you know, probabilities. There are no cer certainties in any of these things. And if you think there's certainty, you, you know, find a different place to, you know, to try to make money because that's not going, that's not going to uh, – to, to be the case. You know, that's just what you don't want to have happen. Now we're going to take here, you know, these are stocks that uh, that are in the Dow Jones that I'm looking at just to show you the, the patterns that are completing. If we take a look here, this is Travelers. It's another financial, you know, insurance company, which is a big one. So you'll see that it's doing the same type of a of a pattern that we're, we're looking at in some of these uh, other things. Uh, the next one we want to take a look at, which I think is uh, really important, and that is the, the fact that McDonald's, you know, Mickey D's, if you look at this chart, uh, you'll notice that we have a 61% uh, retracement from the high we made on May the 19th of uh, last year. That's when we had Norm on from Astro Trend, when we had Mercury going retrograde at a new moon. That was the high day, and of course it went down for well over six months. And as you can see, we've had a 61% retracement of that move that came in at the uh, 124 and change level. That doesn't mean it's going to stop here. It just means that that pattern has been completed. If we look at the other side of this, look at the high that was made in May of 2015 and how it was a perfect 1.618 expansion of the low between January and February. And that's that low that I was just telling you about. Remember how the market was supposed to go up into January? You'll notice how it started. And at the end of January, what did it do? It came straight down for six days. And uh, this is McDonald's, of course. The regular market was not doing this. But that's when it made its bottom, and then it had it had its big move up. So you, I think it's best to look at the patterns and the ratios and then worry about the seasonals next. The seasonals give you a bias if you'd like to have that bias. But if you have the ratios and patterns in front of you, that allows you to quantify your risk. And that's the only thing that you can control in your risk reward equation is that particular risk and you don't want to uh, you don't want to give that up without uh, you know anything else now let's take a look at one other of the biggest stocks in the world and that is uh, Exxon Mobil uh, this has been a, a really really nice stock uh, over the past uh, year we've gone from uh, 67 up to 94 you notice that last week we completed a, a perfect uh, Gartley pattern up at the 78% level at 93. Uh, we're trading around 90, almost 92 to 91 and change today. So uh, this is, should be a pretty significant pattern here, and we could get a correction in some of these uh, someday if they do ever correct. But uh, some of these Dow stocks are showing that we're looking at some really interesting, uh, really interesting things to look at. Now let's get back to what we like to talk about because we haven't got a whole lot of time and that's in the gold and the silver. I really think we got a chance here for this gold to take off here. If we need it to get above 1150 in the gold, if you'll notice here on the long-term weekly, the 78% uh, retracement comes in at $111, $1,117. The low has been uh, 11, 11.24, so that's within 0.1% of that low. Uh, if we look at, uh, you know, some of the others like platinum, look at the difference in platinum, folks. Uh, after we had the bottom come in on Friday, uh, the market rallied on Friday and uh, was up $27 off the bottom. Now, we're still uh, in that same zone here, but boy, it hit that 78% level, you know, spot on. So that's very important. And the same thing is true of the silver market. 
We've had a really strong move in silver. There's a potential for silver to break $16 uh, and get down to the 78% retracement, which would be down around uh, 1540 uh, Whether we do that or not uh, remains to be seen, but there's a, a lot of support coming in here uh, at these levels. Now, um, everybody, well, not, I shouldn't say everybody. There are a lot of people that have gone from bullish to bearish in gold, and this is just a normal correction, folks. This has not been a collapse by any such stretch of the imagination. It's just we've been in a, we went up for six months. If you remember, we started in December, we went up in July, we went July down to December. So it's six months up, six months down. It's going to be interesting. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at the Bradley model versus the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, if you'll remember when um, Mr. Bradley did this, Donald Bradley back in the early, mid-40s, 1940s, uh, he started the book in 46, made the prediction for 1947, 
uh, and we've been following it uh, ever since uh, we, we we did the work from 1875 all the way through uh, where we are this year. We know that it's about 70 percent accurate. Some years it's just absolutely mind mind boggling, right? In other years it's more difficult to interpret. But we are over a major major pattern right now, so watch that very closely. We've made these 1.618 expansions on all these indices, and we are over the Bradley date. Plus, we're at that real special time of Mercury going retrograde is where you don't want to make major decisions, and I think that's true. You should scale back at trading as much as possible just because of the holiday week. Uh, you know, that's just my opinion, but, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see how these things work out. But anyway, keep an eye on this Bradley model because if we do start to back off, We'll be looking at sometime right after the first of the year for another major turn. We'll be looking at that from the standpoint of the stuff that uh, Bill Meridian does, also uh, Norm Winsky, Shane Smolian, and also uh, Stan Harley. So all of those folks are looking for something, you know, right after the first of the year, which will be very, very interesting. And unquestionably, we've had a outlier event since November the 7th when the whole world was surprised. It made Brexit look like something out of uh, Walt Disney uh, movie, but uh, nothing, no one was surprised uh, more than the uh, the people in the United States when uh, there was a big shift in political events. But, you know, the market has anticipated something good happening. I mean, they're not anticipating something bad, and that also surprised a lot of people. I want to leave you with the thing that watch these bonds, folks, because I think that could be the real surprise. I could be wrong, but... This thing is lined up, especially when you look at those high yield bonds and the yield of what we're looking at the 30 year. Uh, the, the orchestra is uh, out of tune. Hey, live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.